Hi there, my name is Phil Hepworth and today we're going to have a quick look at the Audient XB8024 which you can see behind me. We're going to have a quick look at one of the channel strips and a brief look at uh, signal flow. I'll do a full signal flow run through on an additional video um, which I'll put a link to um, underneath this one. One important aspect of these desks to address is the difference between the short faders and the long faders. The short faders are uh, the ones in the dark section in the middle here, and the long faders are the ones down the bottom with the silver background. In the desk's primary or default setting, the short faders control the signal going into your door or tape, and the long faders control the signal coming out of your door or tape that goes to your speakers. Right, that aside, let's have a look at one of the channel strips on the desk. The first section of the desk to look at is the input pod, or the preamp section, which is this part here with the dark background. This button is your mic line selector, which selects whether using your mic input or your line in input. The metering button switches between the short and the long bar graph at the top of the desk. Next we have the insert button, which enables you to insert things into your signal path such as EQs, compressors, or any other hardware that you would like to insert into your signal chain. This is usually done via the patch bay. This is the preamp gain control, which adjusts the amount that the preamp boosts the input signal by. The 48 volts button is the phantom power button, which can be used to power things such as condenser mics or active DI boxes. This is the high pass filter or low cut, which can be used to remove unwanted low frequencies. And finally, we have the polarity reversal switch, which reverses the polarity of that channel's input. Next up, we have the routing section, which tells the signal where to go. This button, for example, will send the signal to input one of your door. Pressing shift switches from outputs one to 12 through to 13 and 24. Next we come to the short fader section, including a pan control, a mix knob, and a source button. Further down, there is the solo and the cut and the fader itself. The short fader is your tape send you need to ensure that the correct input and output are selected on your door and make sure that your track is record enabled. Your signal should now be sent back to the tape return or the long fader section of the desk. And then at the bottom of the desk we have the long fader section in the lighter part which also has a pan control, a mix control and a solo and a cut and of course the fader. The mix buttons, which I've mentioned previously, uh, to tell the desk to send your signal to the master fader and ultimately the speakers. Uh, these are on both the long and the short faders. And then you have the main control master, which you can turn up and down, and it has a dim, cut and mono button. Moving down, we're looking at the auxiliaries section, where you can send a copy of the signal which can be either pre or post fade. The red knobs labeled A and B are for monitoring. Here we have the EQ section starting off with the high and the low frequency controls. and the next section is the high mid frequencies and the low mid frequency controls. I will address EQ in more detail in a different video. These short fader buttons are to tell the auxiliaries and the high and low frequencies to affect the short fader rather than the long fader or take the signal from the short fader rather than the long fader. As an example, these can be activated if you want to apply EQ to the input signal rather than the feed out of your door.